You can be seated. <clears throat> I'd like to begin the service today reading one of the Psalms. It's a Psalm that a lot of us we know well. It's a time of encouragement. It's a psalm of encouragement. We'll read here the 27th psalm to begin with today. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Wonderful words there that the psalmist David wrote encouraging things and if that is the case and we have hopes that that was the case with the diseased sister here that she had a desire to serve the Lord a desire to know the Lord one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and that's why we're here upon the earth and then that eternal life to be with him to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. O oh God of my salvation, and he has promised that he would be with us until the end. To all those that have a desire and loves him, and has a desire for him to be our Savior, he will be with us, and he'll never forsake us. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. And lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Teach me the way of the Lord should be our mind, should be what we're constantly asking for. And lead me in that plain path that if we have that eye singled on our Lord and Savior, then that whole body is full of light. And that plain path then and why he says, because of our enemies. And who is the enemy? But Satan. And we can be led to victory. And he says, I'll never allow anything to come upon you but what there is a way to escape. Deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies, for false witness are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. The spirit is strong. And in the flesh, if we put our trust in that, we would faint. But he says, I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living here. To have that that he said, I will send to you a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. 
Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on him. Put it into his hands. And then be reconciled to whatever comes upon us. I know that this is a sad day to lose Lori, naturally. But it can be a wonderful day to think that if she worked out her salvation and we have hopes of those things, and she knew the Lord, that she's in a much better place than we are today. So let's remember what he said. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in that plain path so that we can see victory in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We'll have a song at this time. I'd like to read a few more words here. We'll turn to John. A lot of encouragement in John. And we think about that, about love. And the love that you had for your wife, your mother, and your grandmother, whatever the situation may have been, sister. There's a lot of love there, and I know that she had for, for y'all. That natural part now has gone, and you can have a lot of memories. But there's one I want to point you to that has eternal love for all of us, to all that will submit to him, to all that will accept him, and then live in accordance the way he would have for us to live. He says, let not your heart be troubled. 
You believe in God, believe also in me. God had so much love for all of us that he sent his only begotten son here upon the earth to live a life in the flesh and to overcome that flesh and to overcome death and then to be risen out of that tomb victorious. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Now this was our Lord and Savior there speaking to his disciples. People that had been with him and seen the power that he had. But one or two of his men there, one of the Thomas immediately said, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. If we don't know him truly, Jesus said that he was the truth. He was the way. And we have to accept him. And if we know him, then we know the Father. And that Jesus Christ is there mediating for us today at the right hand of the Father. Then Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. And that's the works that we need, the works from the Father. The works that the Spirit of the Holy Ghost will do within us, not our works, but walk in the Spirit. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Because he was resurrected there and went back to his father, that is then, he says, when I'm going to go back to him and I will send to you a comforter. I'll send to you the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And that's when we can do that work that he was talking about there. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, Keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. That's the man, that's the spirit. That our Lord and Savior, and we talk about celebrating life, I want to celebrate the life of our Lord and Savior today, so knowing that he gave her the opportunity of eternal life. And he gives that to each and every one that's here in the earth, on the earth today. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Let's read a few verses here in Revelations. <clears throat> And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw John, and I, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. 
and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, neither crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Former things of this life being passed away. But then at that new heaven, there with God the Father to ever be with him, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And the words that we have read today are true and faithful words of our Lord and Savior. And it's the way of salvation. He came here and he paid the price for us all. Let's glorify him and praise the name of Jesus Christ for the opportunity of eternal life through him. We'll have another song at this time. The congregation will all sing number 290. The books are under the bench there if you'd like to have them. Number 290, God be with you. Thank you. 
God be with you till we meet on the other side of Jordan. By his counsels, guide and uphold you. Let the counsels of God be what guides our life and uphold you through the time of sorrow. But I know you can have great joy of memories. And let's keep it focused on our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. To God the Father, through Jesus Christ, our precious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come out today and to talk about what you have done for us and to be encouraged in your work, to be encouraged of how that we can have eternal life by putting it into your hands. And he said, you said that if we love you, to keep your commandments, to follow you, and we beg for guidance, Lord, that your will be done in us. And we ask you to be with the family in the upcoming days to comfort them, to strengthen them, and to lead them to victory in you. We ask these things all in Jesus' name. Amen. This will conclude the service. The body will go to the cemetery. And the family is going to go back into the family room back here. And if there's anybody that would like to visit with them, come by. Some of you may not have had the opportunity to speak with them. They'll be back here into the, in the family room. And after that, we do have a meal prepared down in the educational building for each and every one of you. We'd love for you to stay and be with the family and fellowship with them at that time. You're all welcome to stay and be with the family for the meal. So at this time, you can rise. <laughs>